Hey everybody, welcome to Studio 64. My name's David. I've been searching the interzones for more science, space and tech news to share with you. And I came across this at Science Alert. Yes, gigantic wave in Pacific Ocean was the most extreme rogue wave on record. Hmm, okay. Sounds like a bit of a worry. Let's check this out. In November of 2020, a freak wave came out of the blue, lifting a lonesome buoy off the coast of British Columbia, 17.6 metres high or 58 feet. The four-storey wall of water was finally confirmed in February 2022 as the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded at the time. Hmm, okay. Now, such an exceptional event is thought to occur only once every 1,300 years, and unless the boy had been taken for a ride, we might never know it had even happened. Now, for centuries, rogue waves were considered nothing but nautical folklore. It wasn't until 1995 that myth became fact. On the first day of the new year, a nearly 26-metre high wave, or 85 feet, suddenly struck an oil drilling platform roughly 160 kilometres or 100 miles off the coast of Norway. Now, as usual, I'll leave the link to the main article below the video, so you can pop in, check out these embedded links, go for a bit of a deeper dive if you want. Makes for an interesting read beyond the main article. As I say, not a scientist myself, just love sharing science, space and tech news with everybody. You know, the more we learn the more we know, funnily enough. Yes, now, at the time, the so-called Draupada was defi wave defied all previous models scientists had put together. Now, since then, dozens more rogue waves have been recorded, some even in lakes. And while the, the one that surfaced near, uh, is it uh, Ukulet, Vancouver Island? Apologies that... Uh, for not pronouncing that correctly, if I've done not done so, uh, was not the tallest. Its relative size compared to the waves around it was unprecedented. Now, scientists define a rogue wave as any wave more than twice the height of the waves surrounding it. The Draupner wave, for instance, was 25.6 metres tall, while its neighbours were only 12 metres tall. In comparison, the Euclid wave was, oh, dear God, was nearly three times the size of its peers. Yeah, this is really interesting, isn't it? Let's check this out. This is obviously a, you know, um, computer model of the uh, of the wave itself. This is quite fascinating just to watch the way they do this. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> the poor boy would be scared half to death. It's fascinating. Watch this. This is really, watch the size of this. All of a sudden, out of the blue, down it goes. And all of a sudden, it just picks up again. How'd you like to be in your fishing boat and this comes up behind you? Holy crap. Down it goes. Oh my good god. Here we go. Hello. Wow, that's a that's a big wave. Yeah, you imagine doing a little bit of fishing and you know, you ended up with that. I think I'd be needing a uh Another pair of my old fishing trousers, I think, if I saw that going. I don't know how I don't know how um, sailors do it, fishermen, you know, going out and all that sort of thing. I don't get it. Now, proportionally, the uh, Euclid, the Euclid wave, and again, I can't pronounce it, was uh, likely the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded, explains physicist Johann Gemrich from the University of Victoria in 2022. Now, only a few rogue waves in high sea states have been observed uh, directly and nothing of this magnitude. Now, today, researchers are still trying to figure out how rogue waves are formed so we can better predict when they will arise. Uh, this includes measuring rogue waves in real time and also running models on the way they get whipped up by the wind. Now, we've got a little bit of a video here of a rogue wave um, experiment in a tank and check it out. Wait for it. You'll, you'll, you'll know it when you see it. It's um, it's very interesting, actually. Very interesting indeed. It may explain a lot of disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle too. Everyone goes on about how they're woo, -woo, -woo but I'm wondering if this has got a lot to do with it. If these waves come up as quickly as they uh, they seem to, I can uh, just imagine, um, you know, exactly what's going on. Why am I keep getting gorgeous Asian ladies popping up here all over my screen? What's going on here? Why is it because I'm a middle-aged man from Australia, all of a sudden I get bombarded with, you know, dating sites? Your soulmate is a click away. Go away. Dear Lord. Well, she's probably a very lovely lady, but with these 
ads that keep popping up randomly all the time. People come into my house and make jokes about things, and the next thing I've got all these ads all over the place. Fascinating. All right, let's check out this little video, and then um, we'll uh, carry on the conversation. We come out the other side. Well, that was really interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, I quite, I quite thought it was quite fascinating myself, but just to uh, see a, a you know wave experiment, interesting stuff. Yeah, fascinating. Well, the boy that picked up the um, Liet wave was placed offshore, along with dozens of others, by re by a research institute called Marine Labs, in an attempt to learn more about the hazards out in the deep. Now, even when freak waves occur far offshore, they can still destroy marine operations, wind farms or oil rigs. Or if they're big enough, they can even put the lives of beachgoers at risk. Now, luckily, neither Yukulet or nor Drap Drapna uh, caused any severe damage or took any lives, but other rogue waves have. Some ships that went missing in the 70s, for instance, are now thought to have been sunk by sudden looming waves. The leftover floating wreckage looks like the work of an immense white cap. That's all I'm saying. Possible explanation for, for the uh, Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, I'm thinking this is po quite possible too, especially as they pop up out of nowhere and then just disappear again. Unfortunately, a 2020 study predicted wave heights in the North Pacific are going to increase with alleged climate change. If you watched other videos, you know my attitude on that, which suggests that the uh, Euclid wave may not hold its record for as long as our current predictions suggest. We are aiming to improve safety and decision-making for marine operations and coastal communities through widespread measurement of the world's coastline, said Marine Lab CEO Scott Beatty. Now, capturing this once-in-a-lifetime wave uh, right in our backyard is a thrilling indicator of the power of coastal intelligence uh, to uh, transform marine safety. Yes, the uh, study was published in Scientific Reports. Yes, this is an updated on an update of an earlier article that was published in February of 2022. And as I say, there's the link to Scientific Reports. Just drop into the main article down there, the link below the video, and you can check it out for yourself. Yeah, I think it's important because we're going to be able to predict, hopefully, you know, more closely predict these things. These things are so big. If we can get our predictions down right, hopefully we'll be able to do, you know, some form of evacuation, one hopes, if they're close to a... Uh, you know, a, um, a shore-based city, which would uh, be really, really good. Mm. And obviously help uh, the ships at sea, which is uh, obviously a, a major concern. Mm. All right, well, my name is David. Thanks for joining me for another Studio 64 Science, Space and Tech News update. I shall see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're up for it, drop a comment down below the video because I'd love to hear what you think. All right, take care. And as I always say, if you can't be good, be good at it. And as I also always say, I'll be back.